Okay, what was to be part three of this scene has just turned into part two because I just screwed up. Uh, I uh, what I do is I fill up a uh, secured digital card on the camera, and I you know it takes about it holds about fifteen minutes, six I don't know something seventeen minutes worth of uh, footage, and uh, so I'm juggling two cards as I'm. Uh, and two batteries. I took that card and uploaded it to my computer, and in the meantime I take the other card and I start shooting another segment, and I had two cards at once, and uh, I thought, okay, I need to erase the previous one, and I uh, viewed it and erased it and realized, uh-oh, it was the wrong uh, card, so I'm just gonna have to explain what I went, uh, what I did in here. I've applied um, uh, the Vivid uh, Bermuda Blue, and the Storm Blue, and uh, the Marvy number 12 Gray to the background here. And then after that, I applied some of the black. Now, if you want to see this kind of color scheme, it's occurred to me that this color scheme looks, you know, pretty darn similar to that one that I did for that, uh, uh, the Bayou Shack. And that being said, I, I thought, you know, it might be good to go for a little bit of variation here, you know. I just did that color scheme, uh, you know, one or two nights ago, and uh, uh, let's let's see. I mean, it's already got a little bit of greenish tinge in here, so, you know, I don't know how this is going to look, but, you know, let's, let's take a look here. Maybe take this into kind of a, a you know, a violet variation, at least, at least in part of the... Uh, uh, the scene, just to kind of introduce another uh, part of the, uh, you know, the, the color wheel into the scene. Um, one of the things I did too is this little bare uh, brush stamp. I took that and I stamped it out in the Brilliance White. Um, oops, just to give it kind of an icier feel. Uh, let's see, you can see it right there, and down here in that corner. But, um, anyway, uh, what I was saying is that kind of gives the, uh, the branches, or whatever you stamp out, um, kind of a feeling like they're covered in ice, or, uh, you know, they're, they're frozen, it gives them, you know, temperature, and uh, in order for them to show, uh, down there, you have to take it and at least make the uh, the area behind them dark enough to where white over whatever that uh, value is will show. Now, one of the things I started doing too was I took a um, Q-tip and okay, now the brilliance white dries on glossy cardstock. All right. Now the color box, if you take an impression and you stamp it out, chances are it's going to be wet for a very long time. Uh, that's, you know, these are the, you know, the pads that they, you know, often use in embossing. But how I use this one is, and I've done this in other videos too, is I've, you know, I'm going to go in here and at the base of these trees, I'm going to add in some extra um, lighting and uh, kind of the illusion of a, a soft, uh, texture in there, and what it's going to represent is that fog. And you want to put this in nice, um, soft, and thin layers on here, and that's where you're going to have a lot of control. Don't come down, you know, with a big, huge ball of, you know, super wet and thick pigment ink and start, you know, dabbing it onto your scene with a, you know, see how kind of frayed this, uh, Q-tip has become here. Um, that's kind of what you want. Um, it's a soft applicator and a very thin application. Um, let's put some down here in the, uh, the water to uh, around some of these edges here to kind of just kind of soften them up a little bit. And we'll see how that looks. If you don't like something that you've done with the color box ink, 
Yeah, it's easy enough just to kind of wipe it off, again, because it doesn't dry so quickly. And in the background here on some of these rocks, what I said in that, you know, that video that I, you know, erased, was I put a little bit of um, pigment ink on, you know, some of these rocks, and that kind of, it turns them in space. It makes them look a little bit more dimensional that way. Okay. Um, you want to kind of oscillate, you know, some of your images, or you can, uh, between kind of uh, defined and kind of obscure, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's obscuring is the word, but I, I soften them with a little bit of this pigment ink, and, you know, within the tree it looks like some parts of it are a little bit uh, recessed, and uh, the parts that you leave kind of, you know, in this case black, uh, look a little bit closer to you. So it kind of gives the, the, you know, dimension, you know, an element of dimension within, you know, even an object like that. You see this, uh, you know, that, that little branch back there I put a little pigment ink on. Let me see if I can do this, just kind of hold this and Standing up right here. I guess I can zoom in too, right? But anyway, so see that those branches right there seem a little bit closer. So, you know, it's a nice little trick, and it, it's really fun to do this. I, I find it's uh, really relaxing, and uh, it's kind of fun watching what develops. Now, in this scene right here, I've left a lot of the kind of the white of the page. Um, so this white pigment ink, you know isn't uh, standing out so much by contrast. And so it's, you know, I'm applying it pretty liberally, but if you get into a scene that's really, you know, very dark, you know, this uh, pigment ink, at least a white pigment ink, um, you know, might stand out too much if you use uh, too much of it. So uh, kind of apply uh, accordingly. And if people are saying, well, well, what does that mean? You know, we don't know how much to apply. Well, just apply a little bit at a time. And, you know, as you apply a little bit more and more, kind of hold the card out at arm's distance. And, you know, if it looks like it's getting too much, then remove a little bit and, uh, you know, stop. And uh, it won't become a, kind of a precarious uh, exercise and restraint. Um, Let's see here. White gel pens. Okay, now, in this scene, right here, you can see where I've taken the prickly branches. Let me let's just zoom in here. And you can see this real um, little highlights on top of that branch. You see where it's been stamped out in the brilliance. Uh, white, you know. Even though it's white, it's it's more translucent. You can see the background, but I put a few of those dots on there, and you know it makes it look like a three-dimensional uh, object, and it gives it some variation within that space. You know, uh, value uh, variation. Okay, white gel pen. And this is a snowy scene. Uh, let me see. Let's, let's take this in a little bit. Okay. Let's pull out some of those rocks that kind of disappeared a little bit because I've applied tone over the top of them. You, put, you know, I've got some color from that black into here, but, you know, who cares? When you have the white pen, just go back and kind of redefine it. Down here, I got too much of that uh, color into that. Uh, Uh, snowy bank. So just go back in with the white gel pen and reclaim that if you want to. Um, let's go back and put some little highlights into the water. And this really gives some, uh, some good variation and details. 
and it kind of gives it a surface, doesn't it? You know, it makes it feel as though, uh, you know, it, it is water, and there's a surface, but there could be things on the surface, little reflections. On that bank a little bit. Okay. All right. And about. Kind of a snowy bank right there. Maybe some of this, uh, Lighting, you know, there's a little bit of a shimmering light here and there. And maybe in the, uh, the distance, you can add some visual interest right in there. It's a very subtle contrast because that area is fairly light to begin with, and I'm just putting a, you know, a white dot over something that's already, you know, close to white, so it's not too big of a, a change, but, you know, it's all in the details, right? If you add uh, enough details here and there, kind of, uh, you know, in the end result, it kind of all harmonizes and comes together, and it looks like a more complete, uh, kind of a visual statement, uh, definitely a textural statement. All right, um, how about down here in the foreground? Yeah, see how I'm kind of grouping these things, too? One of the things that uh, tends to be a, um, a pattern with people kind of doing these types of highlights is they space things out like perfectly, like a quarter inch. I don't know why that is, um, and it was no different for me, too. I kind of had to learn to kind of, you know, have things a little bit more... I don't know if the word's random, but, but certainly varied. Okay, now let's put a few little highlights down on these bushes, and if this is, these bushes are covered with ice, then they would probably be uh, more reflective, right? And then say like a, you know, a brown twig or something, you know, where you're seeing the wood, you know, if you have something that's kind of frozen, um, you know, it's covered in a, a real reflective uh, uh, coating. It's less like seeing snow in the uh, distance, I think. I forgot what it, that statistic was, but snow reflects uh, something like, I don't know what it was, 80% of the light or something like that, whereas the, you know, soil or something like that on a mountain, uh, Without it, would I don't know. It was like thirteen. I have no idea what it was. Eight percent or something. So, anyways, putting this down here is kind of adding some texture and dimension. The branches seem a little bit more. I don't know. They don't seem so flat now by having that in there. Okay. Let's see what this scene looks like as a whole. And uh, little oaks and you know the winter mist scene. Um, yeah. this little area is looking a little boring out here to me. A few of those, and maybe out there on that distant hill or something. You know, we can put a, a few little highlights. I tell you, this this little pen, as subtle you know as these dots, you know, could be. They, I guess they could, they don't have to be subtle. They, you know, if you put them against something very dark, it's very you know dramatic in terms of the uh, the contrast and uh, texture. But you know, they can really add um, you know nice little touches. See that area in the background there. Where I think that area otherwise, you know, be kind of boring. You put those little highlights in there, and it, it 
introduces, it says that light is kind of breaking through there and, you know, uh, reflecting on something, you know, here, here, and here. But those little touches like that can really uh, enhance uh, a scene. And uh, in my cases, in many times, they, a lot of times they, they've saved scenes, you know, uh, where I've, uh, I don't know, added too much of something and it just kind of became a little bit muddy or something like that. But these two elements of uh, lightness, soft, and crisp can really bring everything together. Okay, anyways, um, thanks for watching. Um, I don't know, I was going to say.